The time is now 9 p.m. The date is May 3rd, 2022. We will call to order the City Council meeting for the City of Statesboro. We will have our invocation and pledge of allegiance by Council Member Paulette Shaver. Let us bow. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thou kingdom come. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Let these words be true. Agenda item three, public comments. Leah, do we have any public comments? No, ma'am. Okay, we'll move down to agenda item four, consideration of a motion to approve the consent agenda. Uh, item A, that's the approval of the minutes for our work session and council minutes for April uh, 19th. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Right, we're moving to agenda item five, public hearing and consideration of a motion to approve a package to still spirits location reservation in accordance with City of Statesboro Alcohol Ordinance Chapter 6-12A and 6-23H. Jeffrey Lee Dawson and Julie Norman Dawson, DBA Whiskey Business, 1410 Northside Drive East, Statesboro, Georgia, 30445A. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? <coughs> Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, Kathy, if you'll give us a little insight on this, please. Oh. Um. Um. She's got Kathy here. Yeah. Is it K that we need to be doing? What's up? Uh, um, the, the pub um, package sale. Okay. Um, no issues on that one there. Okay. All right. Chief. Chief. All right, Kathy, you good? No, no issues. Okay. All right, is there anyone here to speak for the request? Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, members of council. My name is Chris Gohagan. I'm an attorney with Talby Rushing here in the city of Statesboro. Pleased to be here this morning on behalf of Jeff and Julie Dawson in support of their application for a site reservation for packaged liquor sales at their proposed location at 1410 Northside Drive East in the city of Statesboro. Um, this is an application for a store to do business as Whiskey Business and uh, we're pleased to be here in support of that application this morning. Mr. and Mrs. Dawson are Liberty County residents. Uh, Mrs. Dawson is a Georgia Southern graduate. They currently own four businesses as a family. They have a fencing company that's been in existence since 93 a realty company that's been in existence since 95, uh, a general store that's been in existence since 2015 and has moved and grown in two, on two separate occasions, even through COVID, and a retail uh, packaged liquor store in the Hinesville community called Bootleggers Package Store, which has been in existence since 2016. Uh, in addition, Mr. Dawson from 2000 to 2016 uh, was full-time law enforcement officer employed by the Liberty County Sheriff's Office and the Long, Long County Sheriff's Office. They are here today to talk about their property again at 1410 Northside Drive. This is a map of our fair city. The plots shown on this map are all of the applications for packaged liquor store operations that you have received, whether they are already approved or whether they are currently pending before you. The property we're looking at today, again, is at 1410 Northside Drive East. Just to recap where we went last meeting, you have four issued site reservations, two denied applications from the last meeting and before you today, and then the next meeting you'll have eight more applications that are pending for your consideration. Put that back one time, please. Sure thing. I'll yield to the Honorable Councilman. 
Oh, my <laughs> I'm happy to answer any questions you have about that map, um, and you'll see it several more times uh, throughout. That's what we're talking about, right? That is the one. In fact, if you'll advance the slide, that is the site. That uh, purple bubble is a 1,000-yard territorial bubble that's been overlaid on the site. Um, it's overlaid to help you kind of envision the territory that would be captured by a site reservation issued at 1410 Northside Drive East. This property is located at the intersection of Northside Drive and East Main Street. It is the former Bright Ideas building. This is the front view. It's an interesting configuration um, for this building. It's a triangle with a flattened front, which really gives it frontage on both North Main, I'm sorry, on North Side and on East Main. It's a very interesting configuration to the building. It's a 0.6 acre site. This building has 6,231 square feet. It was built in 1997. This is the side of the building facing East Main Street. Um, again, it, it has frontage towards East Main and a full bank of angular parking on that side. This is the side of the building facing Northside Drive. Um, dedicated access off of East Main, dedicated access off of Northside Drive, another full bank of angular parking um, on the Northside Drive side. You can easily accommodate 20 uh, vehicles at any time in this space without noticing it. The building also has dedicated rear access uh, for loading and unloading, which helps alleviate some pressure in the parking space. Um, this building is, uh, from what I heard in the council sessions leading to the drafting of the ordinance, this building represents a very attractive opportunity for packaged liquor sales in our city. Uh, it's a big building, it's highly visible, double highway oriented commercial property that is currently vacant and needs to get back into use. And if you'll advance the slide one more time. This is what the Dawsons hope that that building will become. This is Bootlegger's Package Store in Hinesville. Um, again, this store has been in existence since 20, this operation has been in existence since 2016. It has moved two different times to accommodate its growth. It's currently located at 5782 West Oglethorpe Highway in Walterville. Um, this operation started in a 900 square foot gas station. Currently, in the new facility, if you'll advance that slide, that was opened in 2019. It is the largest package store by square footage from Waycross to Savannah. There's 11,000 square feet of inventory in this location. This store generates between five and six million dollars a year, a year in sales and that number grows every year as does the space. I believe when you look at these pictures, uh, I hope you'll agree that this is the kind of operation we hope to bring to Statesboro when this ordinance came to be. Um, the, the, the Bootleggers Liquor Store adjoins Dawson's General Store that I told you about before. It occupies the other 14,000 square foot on the other side of this building and the Dawson's run it as a family. One more. This is the site. Again, importantly, there are no territorial conflicts with this application. It is the only application up for your consideration. Um, within a thousand yards of the site once more. This slide shows the site um, in comparison to the four site reservations that are already issued. This is not intended to illustrate any conflict, just to kind of give you a sense of, of what you've already done from the last meeting and how this site will fit into it. And with one more slide, I'm going to pull a couple of those out. And what I think is interesting about this slide is I, we talked a little bit in the last meeting about control. If you grant this site reservation uh, for 1410 Northside and you lay it next to the site reservations issue for LNC and for Esperro Liquors, I think you kind of establish a Highway 80 corridor and you gain quite a bit of control over a very sensitive commercial area in our community and in doing so you brought three really good looking operations to it. You have another application later on in this agenda, I think that will require you to make a decision about whether you, whether you put something else along that corridor, um, but already I think you've, you've gained some really good control over that. Uh, that is the application for Bootlegger's Package Store. We appreciate your consideration. Hope you look favorably on it. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak against the report? Right, seeing that there is none, is there a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, any discussion by council? Mr. Mayor, I have a question <clears throat> for Mr. Gilhagen or the owners if they're here. Do you know if their plans include repainting it, that dark lid color of the other store? No, ma'am, we, we're not going to try to 
Um, <laughs> this is Jeff Dawson. We are definitely going to clean it up, but we don't want to make something stand up, stand out or anything. I mean, I don't want no bright colors or pink. We was going for a farm look when we built the other building for the general store. Gotcha. That's the reason we ended up with the red. But um, I think the building looks good now with a touch of paint, same color or something like that. Nothing neon or anything like that. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Okay. Appreciate you coming in. Any further discussion or comments? All right, seeing that there was none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing that it is not let it show that agenda item five has passed. We'll move down to agenda item six, public hearing consideration of a motion to approve a hatch still spirits, location reservation in accordance with City of State Guard Alcohol Ordinance Chapter 6-12A and 6-23H. Uh, Shri Don Loxney, LLC, DBA Easy Liquors, 1525 Fair Road, Suite 106, Sex Work, Georgia. Is there a motion to open the hearing? So Is moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Kathy? No issues, sir. Kane? No issues, Mayor. Chief? No issues, Mayor. Chief? No issues. Okay. All right. Is there anyone here to speak for the request? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Are you the liquor lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a lawyer. Just a lawyer. Just a lawyer. Uh, my name is Chris Gohagan again, Toby Rushing. I'm pleased to be with you once again uh, to present on behalf of Shri Don Loxney LLC and its applicant owner, Vishaka Patel. Uh, this is a very different presentation than the one you just heard from me, but it is exciting for me for a very different reason. And that is that Mrs. Patel and her husband, Sam Patel, are residents of the city of Statesboro. Mm -hmm. uh, these are people who voted on this ordinance. These are the people who I heard many times in the council discussions leading to the drafting of the ordinance that this, ordin that this opportunity is intended to benefit. And so we're very excited to present an application today on behalf of city of Statesboro residents. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Patel reside at 1008 Moss Creek Circle in the city of Statesboro. Again, they voted on this ordinance and they hope to participate in this opportunity. Uh, Mr. Patel, who is in the audience today and happy to answer any questions you may have as agent for his wife, uh, is an existing package liquor store license holder. He has an operation in Tattnall County. Um, so they bring experience to this field as well. Again, uh, Councilman Riggs, this is the map showing the location of all approved and pending applications before Council. You now have five site reservations issued, two denied, and seven pending. I'm here to talk to you currently about the application that is pending at 1525 Fair Road. That's our Fair City uh, showing the location we're here to talk about with a thousand yard territorial bubble again to illustrate for you the kind of territory that you would grab if you issued this site reservation. This application is for uh, suites 106 and 107 in the Mariah Plaza. Um, it's often called the Orchid Plaza, um, I think around town. Um, these are the, in, the two end units on the right. Um, again, 106 to the left, 107 to the right. Um, you'll see from this uh, image also this property has rear, dedicated rear access which again uh, helps to alleviate parking pressure for deliveries and vendors. Alternative angle of the front of the property again it's the two units under the columns to the right side. This, this site has ample parking. Uh, the site ha also has two dedicated entries from Fair Road. Uh, a liquor store in this uh, location would be entirely consistent with the adjoining uses from this plaza. Both units are currently built out as micro office space, uh, so to convert this to a retail package liquor store will be an extensive renovation. The interior will be torn down to the studs, uh, the layout will be completely changed, the partition wall between the two units will be removed and it will be opened up as a single consolidated space. Uh, it's also going to require a, a full conversion of the fixtures, furniture and equipment, cooler walls, beer caves, everything you would expect. When the partition wall is removed, the two units will have 5,500 combined square feet of space for this operation. This again is the site. Uh, importantly, again, there are no territorial conflicts with this application. It is the only application of your consideration within a thousand yards of that address. 
These are the four site reservations you had issued prior to this meeting. You just issued a fifth uh, to the north side of town. Uh, if we advance the slide one more time, I think this slide also gives you an interesting element of that control. Um, the green dot is the Blue Mile Wine and Spirits site reservation that was awarded last time. Again, the purple is the application for uh, the, the application that's currently pending before you. Virtually everything in between those two dots is university property. And so if you cap off one end of Fair Road with Blue Mile Wine and Spirits and you cap off the other end of Fair Road with this application, I think you've gained a serious element of control along that Fair Road corridor to protect the sensitive university strip uh, of that section of highway. That is the application uh, for Sri Don Laksmi LLC and Ms. Vishak Patel. We again hope you look favorably on it. Mr. Patel is here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak <coughs> against this request? Seeing that there is none, um, is there a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Let us open it up for council discussion. Uh, I, I just want to go back to one of the slides. There, there, they were indicating like distances between each location. Okay. Yeah. So. Please explain to me, okay, if the bubbles overlay, what is that indicating? It really doesn't, for the purposes of the green circles, it really does not indicate anything. If you look at each one, that tells you a thousand yards as the crow flies from that building. The actual measurements are taken slightly different from that. This is really more for illustration. In order to identify a conflict, and I'll show you a slide that does this later on in our council meeting, you would need to shrink those circles to 500 yards and look for the intersection between the circles. You would only find a thousand yard conflict on this image if you saw a dot that was inside of a circle. You're not looking for intersection of circles, just circles that cover other dots. So there's no conflict that existed between any of the four site reservations you've already issued, and there's no conflict presented by this application. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion or council? Mr. Mayor, I just want to comment. I was a little concerned when I saw that it was diagonally opposite a church, a local church. It's outside the legal prohibition, but it is kind of diagonally across the street from the LDS, by the way, Saints. You know, but I reached out to a friend who attends, and they said, although they choose to drink, they don't have any concern about it being over there. So I just thought I would share that with council members. Well, thank you. Any further discussion by council? Okay, if, if you could tell me what is the distance that a liquor store has to be from a church? I believe it's 100 yards, okay. and, it's as, and it's based on a uh, travel distance on foot. So that's why it's... it's it's from door to door, so in this situation, it, it, there's no proximity <coughs> issues that would bar the issuance of this location reservation on this application. Any further discussion by council? Seeing that there is none, is there a motion to approve? So Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Seeing that there's none, let us show that agenda item six has passed. We'll move down to agenda <coughs> item seven, a uh, public hearing and consideration of a motion to approve a package to City of Spirits location reservation in accordance with City of State Square Alcohol Board Chapter 6-12A and 6-238H. Uh, we have item 7A and 7B, uh, which is 7A is Downside Investment Group, DBA Patriot <coughs> Liquors, 834 Northside Drive East, Statesboro, Georgia 30458. And then 7B is Raymond Driggers DBA Whiskey Warehouse 647 Northside Drive East, Statesboro, Georgia 30458. Uh, Kathy, um, any any issues in regards to these two applicants? Uh, no issues, sir. All right. Chief? No issues, ma'am. Kane? No issues, ma'am. Chief? No issues. All right. Seeing that there's none. Um, is there a, um, well, I'm sorry, did I open this up for you? No. I was just I didn't. Say okay, my bad. And feel, I'm gonna let you get on your job now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there a motion to open the hearing? So, is there a second? I'll do it in favor. Uh, all right. All right, so uh, we, we've already heard from the staff. Um, is there anyone here to speak for this request?
Good morning, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Penning, members of the council. I'm Andrew Lavoy. I'm with Bruce Matthews and Lavoy here in town. I rise in support of our client Downside Investment Group doing business as Patriot Liquors with respect to this site reservation application. Uh, one of the principals of Downside, Mr. Danny Merritt, is uh, here with us today. Uh, Mr. Merritt uh, lives down in the Savannah area, but he's excited to uh, bring their liquor or package store business up here to the city of Statesboro. Mr. Merritt is a co-founder of Nine Line Apparel. You all know that uh, brand has been around for some time. Uh, it's on that 204 corridor down there getting into Richmond Hill. Um, and uh, that's not all. Uh, I mentioned he has a package store business as well. Uh, he's a principal uh, in uh, a Patriot Liquors location down in Hinesville, Liberty County as well. Uh, it's the largest veteran-owned package store in Liberty County. Um, he also has a number of other uh, business interests. He's involved with commercial and residential real estate. Uh, he's involved in student housing. Uh, he also has interest in some salons. Uh, so there's a number of uh, ways that he's uh, made himself um, you know, a, a productive member of a number of communities uh, doing business uh, both uh, down near Chatham County, Liberty County, and now wanting to be here in the city of Statesboro. This application concerns the Pestmaster building on Northside Drive, uh, so on the way out uh, from uh, you know, down, uh, down closer uh, in toward uh, Chick-fil-A, come out from there, you get to Northside Drive, go up and you get to the Pestmaster building. Um, I neglected to mention uh, that Mr. Merritt, uh, importantly, is uh, a, a major in the United States Army. He has a Bronze Star. He's also a combat veteran uh, from Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, these are the kind of work ethics and, uh, and principles that govern his daily life and, of course, his business life as well. Um, now, what are the criteria that this council considers in deciding whether to grant one of these applications, especially in a situation like this where there is an overlap or a conflict. One of the first and foremost uh, in 613 is reputation. Uh, Mr. Merritt's going to speak to this a little more uh, when he uh, approaches uh, the council, but uh, I think it's fair to say there have been no issues with his Hinesville location of this store. Uh, they, they and his partner have a very good uh, reputation in Liberty County for running a tight ship. They haven't had any compliance, <coughs> regulatory, legal issues. It hasn't turned into a dive where there's a bunch of loitering going on or a bunch of, uh, a bunch of criminal issues happening down there. Uh, so first and foremost, the, the top criteria is always reputation. It's certainly something this council can and should consider. And uh, I have not uh, certainly reached out or heard from anybody with the what I would call the competition, unfortunately, in this situation. But to my knowledge, Mr. Merritt and his partner in this business are the only ones of these two with liquor store, with package store experience. They <coughs> currently own and operate one right now with a very good reputation down in Liberty County. And I think that sets them apart in this situation. But what I really think sets this application apart is location. Um, that is the Pestmasters building being right there on Northside Drive. This is where this application shines above its competition. Again, and I've said this before and I'll say it again with respect to this application, I'm not wanting to disparage anybody, uh, our, our co-applicant in this situation. I don't mean to say anybody's not running a, a good business or wouldn't be able to do what they said they want to do in the other location. But this council needs to consider the aspects of both of these locations to determine which one uh, would be the best one, the best fit, for this city. And so the competing application on this one is the dry cleaner, also on Northside Drive, on the other side of its intersection with Savannah Avenue, um, going in toward town on the other side of the road. Um, the Pestmaster building, uh, owned by our client, uh, is larger. It's currently occupied. It's been kept up over the years. I think we've all driven past the, the dry cleaner and see that it's been vacant for some time. And our client's building is far easier to access from Northside Drive. It has a larger parking area, it has parking in the front, on the side, and in the back, which could be used either for parking or, importantly, for deliveries. And it's also serviced by Carmel Drive, which runs off of Northside Drive along the side of our client's building. Uh, so there's dual road access to the Pestmaster building, which I don't think is the case uh, with our competition. Um, in addition, I think we've all sat on Savannah Avenue, wanting to turn right on the North Side Drive, have to go up that hill, have to watch the traffic that's coming at us, and have to negotiate any number of folks who are coming this way and the other uh, to go through there. There's also Deanna Drive and Jet Drive just up from Savannah Avenue. You also got to watch out for. Um, 
it, in my experience, it would be difficult to add a number of delivery trucks, customers, other vehicle traffic coming through that area, going up that hill to get to the competing applicant's building, uh, whereas with our building on the other side of North Side Drive going away from town, uh, there simply isn't that concern. Um, finally, uh, we, did a, we did a measurement by the most convenient route, and from what we could tell, uh, our building is, is farther from the front doors of, of Statesboro High School, um, which is you know, certainly something this council can consider as well, how close, and uh, neither building, to my knowledge, uh, is within a restricted area of the school. But if you were just to measure from door to door, from our building, supposed to be uh, the competition's building, we're farther away from the front doors of Statesboro High School. Um, and I think it's, unless you want to jump a bunch of fences and climb a bunch of trees, uh, you're not going to get there coming from Statesboro uh, High School uh, to our building, um, and it's certainly a good distance away from, uh, from where, the, where the students would be there at the front. Um, so again, uh, we think we're ideally situated uh, to be granted uh, this application. Um, this would be a veteran-based brand, a veteran-owned business. The building is up and running right now. It could be retrofitted and turned into an operating store immediately with no environmental concerns, no contingencies. My client owns the building. There's no issue with them getting in there and doing it right away. It's better access from Northside Drive, safer for customers, safer for deliveries, safer for the general public than trying to shoehorn your way into the, uh, the dry cleaner. Um, and to my knowledge, again, Mr. Merritt and his partner are the only applicant in this item seven with package store experience. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna introduce Mr. Merritt for just some brief comments about his background, especially in the package store space. But we ask that this council look favorably on this application and grant it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Merritt. Good morning, Mayor, council. <clears throat> my name is Danny Merritt. Um, Kind of covered my uh, my business background, my military background. The thing that I uh, that I love the most about creating businesses, I've created about ten of them in the last ten years. You know, I, I like creating jobs. I like uh, I like building teams, um, creating brands, and competition. And I, I love an opportunity to do that right here in Statesboro. Um, we pay our employees by 30% more than anybody else. We like we like building teams. We like setting up families for success. And uh, I would love an opportunity to do that here with you all. That's, that's all I have. Thank you. Well, thank you. Is there anyone here to speak for 7B? <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. Good morning. A couple of things um, Mr. Penny brought up last meeting. When we decided to do this, or you decided to have this done, it was local business owners taking over closed businesses to try to help states grow. The one we're going against great people, but it's already existing business. So what we looked at was finding something that needed to be changed, freshened up, make states look better, open a good liquor store. There is two accesses to it, one on the side road, four deliveries behind the building. That building also has a drive through in it, which I am going to tear down. I do not think we need a drive through in any liquor store. So that would be removed and making additional parking on the side. Um, we are further from the Statesboro High School parking lot, which concerns me about the other location. There is no children that are parking there that can see our location at all, but they will see the other. Um, as far as everything else we do, I mean, I'm a local business owner here in town, been here for 25 years, tied back to the community pretty heavy. Would love to do this and see what we can do from there. Thank you. All right. What's my name? Ray Drickers, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there anyone here to speak against 7A? Is there anyone here to speak against 7B? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Emily and I'm here to speak in opposition to opening the liquor store uh, for the Whiskey Warehouse. Um, I have a petition here that has 24 signatures of people that are at the immediate neighborhood there. Um, the, the liquor store would be right at the cusp 
at the at one of the roads of, of the uh, of the neighborhood, um, and uh, that presents concerns. I mean, it's right at the border, uh, right behind the proposed liquor store is a house. <laughs> I mean. I mean, most people, I would think, would not want to have a liquor store in their backyard, so to speak. Um, people want to feel safe. Um, uh, and I have 24 signatures here, and I'll give you the petition. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I have to say. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak against 7A or B? Seeing that there is none, is there a motion to close the hearing? Second. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. And uh, I do understand that our city manager has some insight in regards to this. Yes, sir. <coughs> Mayor, members of the council, um, at the last meeting, when we do have a conflict, you um, Ask me to provide you with the recommendation. So, in the case of the Northside package store locations, um, the package store conflict is between Downside Investment Group, also known as Patriot Liquors, and Raymond Driggers, also, also known as Whiskey Warehouse. The proposed address of Patriot Liquors is 834 Northside Drive East. The proposed address of Whiskey Warehouse is 647 Northside Drive East. The conflict does exist between the two locations with the distance being less than a thousand yards required by the ordinance. The city chose to require greater separation than the state, which is 500 yards. Both locations are viable, viable oper for operating a package store, and both applicants have met the requirements to be awarded a package store license by the city council. Based upon the additional factors of general impact of, of the location on surrounding areas, limited parking availability based on current configuration there's insufficient space to accommodate delivery vehicles on site on the proposed properties Northside drive has a traffic count of 17,100 vehicles per day and 834 Northside drive has been dormant for a number of years i recommend the liquor license not be awarded for either location there's sufficient other properties in the general area with vacant spaces and adequate parking for customers and delivery of products. Should the City Council choose to support this recommendation, I recommend the applicants be allowed to identify another location without the submission of another's application fee. The applicant would have 30 days to submit a new location. That is my recommendation. All right. We will now open it up for Council discussion. Any discussion by Council? Um, I'll give you my two cents. First, um, 834 Northside Drive East, right there on Car uh, Carmel Drive. It's right next to someone's house, uh, just like on Jet Drive. Um, I have a problem with that. I would not want me or my children to grow up next to a liquor store. Uh, I look at the other one, which is on Jet Drive. It even has a delivery track from Jet Drive, and I know people on, on, on Jet Drive. Uh, it's, it, both of them are just too close to, to residential for my taste. And of course, I'd go with Mr. Driggers because uh, he's been a wonderful uh, um, ambassador for Statesboro with business and just everything that he's done. Uh, I, I, it's just too close to houses on Jet Drive. Oh, it's too close to houses. With Mr. Penny, I think that would probably be the better bet at this point. I do not realize those neighborhoods were there. The house behind mine, I would also purchase, but I just do think that might be a little too close. Mr. Penny might be correct in the situation. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Well, if it's, if it's too close on that one, then, uh, and I appreciate you saying that. If it's too close on that one, then, it's, uh, then Carmel Drive is also too close. Because, I mean, it is, they back up, that, that, is, a, that is a house and the uh, liquor store property. Um, there's nothing in between. Uh, that's not two cents. Okay. Any further discussion by council? I was going to add, um, when looking at this, I just thought that it was too close to the high school. I know that it's in the limits 
um, that we set, but just I know when kids walk mm-hmm. home, they were being close, so I was already feeling uncomfortable about this um, matter. But then hearing what everybody says, I do want to go with Mr. Penny's recommendation. Any further discussion by council? Ms. Karen, I had one question, please. <clears throat> to the owner of the property where Pest Masters is now, should this application be granted, what would happen to Pest Masters? Ma'am, they've been on a uh, month-to-month lease for well over a year. Um, I think they're looking at other options to expand uh, or actually purchase their own business uh, and building together. So we're not we're not looking to force anybody out. It's It's been an open topic. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any further discussion by council? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> the location at 834 Northside, and I, I, I appreciate the um, the owner's commitment to business and, and building teams and, and those types of things. And, and I would think his reputation would also want him to, to understand that neighborhood a little bit better before even thinking about putting a, a liquor store there. Uh, Carmel Drive in particular is has a number of transitional homes for uh, substance abuse uh, recovery individuals, um, not only from Welling Way and Pineland, but from other places. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are other houses in that uh, neighborhood, and there are houses across the street along Savannah and along Jet as well. So um, for that reasons and and those those businesses those are houses and residential neighborhoods but those are people trying to get their lives back together and and i think um, we would do them a disservice by putting a liquor store so close to um, efforts to to turn around their lives not to mention the fact that it really is on the back door of the high school Uh, you can say it's not close to the front door but the soccer field is right there Uh, the back entrance to the football field is right there so for for those reasons I, i very resistant to putting that that particular location. Okay. I, I, I concur. I, I want to go with Mr. Penny's recommendation, but also allow them the opportunity to find another location, but that's too close to the high school for me, and then we have concerned residents here, um, so that concerns me as well. Mr. Mayor, I'll echo what other folks are saying, but I also want to reiterate that we do appreciate folks who are good business people and who are looking and want to come to Statesboro. We want to work with you. Um, And we also appreciate local people who are trying to reuse properties and encourage that. And I fully endorse what Mr. Penny has suggested about saving y'all a fee. If you can find another location and come back to us within 30 days, that, that fee can still apply. So please come in. Is there a possibility, Mayor, that we could push it like 60 just in case as you with leasing opportunities and everything else, it might take a little bit longer to put that together. But that'd be the only thing I'd ask to consider. Mm-hmm. 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 Go ahead, Mr. Mm-hmm. Mayor, I think we would be okay with 60 days. We just did not want it to, to drag out, but yeah. mm-hmm. um, and, and we didn't want we know that the reservations is good only for six months, but we didn't want to give uh, other applicants another six months. So 60 days would be would be acceptable. Okay, and so this says so it will be at council's discretion to amend Mr. Penny's recommendation from 30 days to 60 days. So moved. Okay. Well, and uh, another side note. We're, we're we're still in council discussion, so. We want to make sure that everybody's good to go. But go, go ahead. Or, yeah, I just want to make sure that side note that we're not only applying this today, but we're applying this retroactively and moving forward. So I don't know if this needs to be uh, an unofficial policy that we're we're voting on or a resolution, but uh, uh, but we do want to make that consistent for all all folks across the board. Yeah, at least at this stage of the game. Yeah. Okay. yeah you, you, you did have one the last time that was mm-hmm. denied, so that 60 days would apply to that person from this day going forward. Okay. Okay. But now we do need to be clear that the, the process, they still would need to go through the, the regular application process. And, and as soon as those applications come back, then the, the clerk's office would process those applications. So I don't want one, someone who's competing thinking that the other one has to wait 60 days because they, they may come in before that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. And, and so is there a motion to approve uh, the city manager's recommendation with the amended 60-day time frame? So moved. Is there a second? 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We'll move down to agenda item eight, public hearing consideration of a motion to approve. Can I encourage them again, please find someplace else? We'd like y'all uh, to have I got you. Again. I got you. Too. We have a vote. On Sorry. Them. No, that's it. We, we didn't, didn't vote on these. We did? No. We only voted to extend the 60 day. Oh, no, no, no. The, the rec no, we, rec we did it on the recommendation. We did not turn either one of these down. Okay. That, that's, that's, that was the city manager's recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just saying the motion was not to turn either one of these down. It was just to extend the 60 days. So, well, no. Sherry, no. also amend your motion. I mean, it's important to to, to state that we are turning these both down. I think, okay. I think, I, I think we Leah, said, Leah what, understands that I'm saying I, 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 Let me retain the floor. Uh, what, I, what I said was the city manager's recommendation with the amended 60 days and his recommendation was to turn both of them down. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we move down to agenda item eight, public hearing consideration of a motion to approve a package to discuss spirits location reservation in accordance with city of space for alcohol ordinance chapter 6-12A and 6-23H. Uh, we have 8A, which is 815 South Main LLC, 815 uh, South Main Street, Sage Grove, Georgia, 30458. We have 8B, the county line 2, LLC, DBA, the county line 814 South Main Street, Sage Grove, Georgia, 30458. And then we have 8C, Timothy Allen Hunt, DBA, House of, uh, House of Booze, 801 South Main Street, Sage Grove, Georgia, 30458. Uh, is there a motion to open the public hearing for items 8A, 8B, and 8C? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Kathy? No issue, sir. Kane? No issues, Mayor. Chief? No issues, Mayor. Chief? No issues. All right. All right. We'll, move, we'll move down. Uh, is there anyone to speak for the request of 8A? Good morning again, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Chris Gohagan, Tommy Rushing back once more. On behalf of 815 South Main LLC and its applicant owners, Nick Props and Robbie Bell, I wanted to congratulate this council and the city staff once more on this ordinance that has created such <coughs> vibrant competition in this space. Uh, I think that was the goal of the ordinance, and I've, I've been very impressed with the discussion and the consideration of all these applications and have agreed with your decisions in step. You are now faced with a very difficult decision as to what you want to do with the section of South Main Street between the university and the bypass. I'm here today on behalf of 815 South Main LLC and again its owners Nick Props and Robbie Bell. Uh, they are here today to submit an application for a site reservation for packaged liquor sales at their location at 815 South Main Street in the city of Statesboro. Um, both of these gentlemen are Bullitt County residents. Both of these gentlemen are Georgia Southern grads. Uh, both of these gentlemen have 30 plus years of experience in real estate development within our community. Mr. Bell is from multi-generational Bullitt County family. Uh, he owns multiple real estate development companies in this community. He is among the largest individual taxpayers in the city of Statesboro or Bullitt County. Mr. Props, uh, likewise, owns multiple business locations in the city of Statesboro. Um, he is, has extensive experience in real estate development, um, and he is extremely generous in the giving of his time to this community. Uh, he has previously served on the city's planning and zoning board. He has chaired the Downtown Statesboro Development Authority. He served on the boards for the Open Hearts Community Mission, the Statesboro Downtown YMCA, the Statesboro Police Officers Association, and Fostering Bullock Seventh Mile Farm. For his commitment to this community, he's been awarded the prestigious Dean Day Smith Award. It's the highest civil service, civil service award in our community. These gentlemen are ideal applicants to operate in this space within our city. Together, these are the properties that my clients own within the city of Statesboro. If you were to drive around town and visit these properties, the common theme that would emerge from that tour is you would see immediate and transformative improvement of each one of these properties. Uh, Mr. Penny, I've heard you express many times um, that you believe the most impactful projects in our community are the ones you can see from City Hall. If we had windows facing north out of this building, I'll show you what you would see, and it's property owned by these clients. 
55 East Main Street is the Matthews building. Um, you will see it as soon as you step onto the front porch. Um, Mr. Bell and Mr. Props own that building and have for a number of years. Uh, they renovated it several years ago to completely remove the rear of that building toward the interior down to the studs, rebuilt it. It now houses the Davis Bozeman Johnson Law Firm on the bottom and Loft Apartments on the top. You can advance a few slides there. This is exactly the type of mixed use development we try to attract uh, to our downtown and this is the level of quality that these clients bring to their projects. If you walk just a little bit further down the street to 65 East Main, you'll find Jackson Grace. This is another of their restoration projects. Again, it's a fully remodeled commercial space on the bottom with loft style apartments on the top. You head the other direction down the street, you'll get 28 East Main Street. That's the home of Mr. Props Real Estate Company, Statesboro Properties. Uh, this was another complete gut. This building was pulled back to the studs and completely renovated. And uh, it's housed Mr. Props' real estate company for several years now in the heart of our downtown. If you head out South Main, you'll find 418 South Main Street. This is Foundations Resource Center. If you lived in the community for a little while, you remember what this was before it looked like this. It was a residence that kind of became a quasi-retail operation, and now it is a uh, glowing piece of property on our Blue Mile. Uh, thanks to these owners, it has experienced revitalization and has been converted to professional office space uh, where it has a productive tenant. These, again, are the properties that these gentlemen own in your city. Uh, each of these properties contributes significantly to your tax base and they contribute significantly more now than they did when these gentlemen acquired them. And that is the promise of the property we're presenting at 815 South Main. Council Briggs' favorite map again shows the locations of all pending and approved applications for site reservations that you've considered. You now have six approved site reservations, three denied, and you're down to four pending before you and three of them are in consideration on this one agenda item. This is my client's location at 815 South Main. Again, that purple bubble indicates 1,000 yard territorial reach uh, as the crow flies. Um, I think that that picture is telling because it shows you this property grants you reach all the way to the bypass. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we advance through the slides. This is what the property looks like currently. It is a metal building. Uh, it was slab on grade. It was built in 1970. Currently has 4,300 square feet of space. This is an alternate angle of the front. It has two points of access off 301, um, both for ingress and egress, very wide entrances, no problems for access. It also has ample parking. You could easily strike and fit 30 cars uh, in this lot with plenty of space to move around. Interestingly, this property also has a pre-constructed uh, extended slab off the back. That offers the opportunity to add 15,000 square foot of space to this property without expanding the footprint, which is an important consideration for liquor stores. Uh, when you get into changing the footprints of the buildings, that creates some issues, so that is available. This is the floor plan of what it looks like currently. It's set up as a retail, retail store operation. It will be gutted and completely renovated. Again, this is the design for what it will look like when we're done. Towards the top of that image, you see a cooler wall. As you come down through the main showroom, those are two-sided LED casings. Uh, toward, in the bottom left is a beer cave. This is a full liquor store remodel built to suit this space. And this is what it will look like when it's completed. Uh, you saw that first picture of a metal building from 1970. That building will be no more. Uh, that building that has not changed uh, for as long as I have lived in Statesboro uh, was purchased by my clients in 2021 and very quickly could look something like this. Uh, this is the kind of growth we want to see in our city and this is the kind of store um, that I believe you would like to see operated. Like all other projects owned by these gentlemen, we're looking at immediate and dramatic improvement of the property. Once again, this is the location showing the 1,000 yard territorial reach. This shows the site in relation to the site reservations that were issued at the last meeting. Uh, you've since issued two additional site reservations that aren't plotted here, um, but it just shows this, this site in relation to the others. This shows the site in relation to all site reservations issued at the last meeting in green and all applications that were pending before you at this meeting in purple. And the only problem with this application, and you can see it, on that slide is that it is in conflict with two other 
very strong applications for site reservations in the same area. Councilman Chambers, Chambers, you asked earlier about the bubbles that I've drawn. I want to show you another slide and reduce those bubbles to 500 yards. Here at any point where you would were to see intersection between the bubbles, that would indicate territorial, territorial conflict. These sites are all within 500 yards of one another, not within 1,000 yards of each other. They are extremely close. I think it indicates that this is a sensitive area of the community where there's recognized opportunity for this kind of project. And I think you're going to see a liquor store on this stretch. The decision you have today is, is which one do you want to see? Um, I attended every council work session leading to the drafting of this ordinance. <coughs> Our clients, Mr. Bell and Mr. Cross, also attended virtually all of those. And I followed the, close, the conversation very closely. And uh, through that conversation, I really became impressed that there were three things that this council was looking for in high quality applications for retail packaged liquor stores. You were looking for a good building with good applicants with a great site. When the conversation started out, it was really dominated by talk about buildings. I think everyone had a sense of what their favorite liquor store looks like and they've got one maybe they've got strong feelings about they think would look good in our community. Uh, there was a lot of discussions about having um, standalone buildings as a requirement. There was a lot of discussion about having square footage requirements. There was a lot of discussion about having inventory requirements almost as a substitute for a square footage requirement. At the end of the day, this council adopted none of those requirements. What everyone I think thought initially was really important in the building um, ultimately kind of become a, a second consideration. There are elements of the ordinance that relate to the building and it is something for you to consider today. Uh, but it, I was impressed through the discussion that the building ultimately wasn't the most important element of this. As to the three buildings that you're going to hear about in these competing applications, in my opinion, they are very similar buildings. They are metal buildings. They're built slab on grade. They're highway facing buildings. They are all suitable for this use. Mr. Hunt um, has by far the biggest building. Uh, based on square footage alone, it's twice the size of either building. Traditionally, that building has housed two businesses. Um, so I, I think we have some questions about how much of that square footage gets allocated um, to the liquor store space, but there's obviously plenty of space in that. Um, ultimately, I view these buildings as very comparable. They're all big enough to serve this section of our community in this space, and I believe each building will be renovated to a high standard and will serve a good job. The second factor that I heard developed through the conversation related to good applicants. Um, that, that is something that was pervasive throughout the entire discussion, and I think you have three really tremendous applicants um, to consider today. I've already told you about my clients, why I believe they are the ideal participants to join into this section of our economy. They could not be more invested in the city of Statesboro and in real estate in particular in this community. They are serial entrepreneurs and have had success in every endeavor. You could say the exact same things about Mr. Hunt. Um, he is a pillar of our community, a very successful business person. He carves a wide wake of, of economic activity in our community and he's highly valued. The other applicants from the county line um, are tremendous applicants from this perspective as well. They obviously bring the unique experience in this space um, to their application and they are to be credited for that. Mr. Lavoie, in speaking on the last application, specifically mentioned the topic of reputation. Um, and I heard that mentioned in the council's discussions leading to this ordinance. I did not hear any discussion of reputation within liquor sales. Um, I believe if you have achieved a very high reputation as a successful entrepreneur in this community, and that reputation follows you wherever you may go. And that is certainly true of my applicants who have experienced success in many different realms, and Mr. Hunt as well. Um, so on the basis of reputation, I find it hard to distinguish uh, between these applicants as well. The final uh, characteristic that I heard developed through the discussion is you need a great site. This never went away. The qualities of a site that you were looking for was pervasive in your discussions from the beginning to the end, and it is the factor that most carried forward into the final ordinance. In fact, the only time y'all decided to tighten the belt on the state regulations related to sites and where these sites are going to be located. When you've got relatively comparable buildings and you've got relatively comparable applicants, the determining factor, I think, based on your discussions would be a great site. And that is where I believe on these applications you can distinguish. 
as it pertains to the site, you're looking for suitability for use as a liquor store and compatibility with other uses in the area. I want to show you these three competing properties from the air. This is 810 South Main Street. This is the former Party Impressions building. Mr. Hunt has an application pending before you at this site. This is a fantastic commercial location. Uh, it could be successful as any number of things. I don't know that it's the ideal site for a packaged liquor store operation in the city of Statesboro. It has three primary issues, I think. The first is parking. Um, if you visited that store when it was Party Impressions, you probably had a hard time parking there. Party Impressions is not going to pull the kind of traffic that a, a 10,000 foot liquor store is going to create. I think maybe there's some options to reconfigure some parking over there, but parking will be a problem at this site. The other issue is access. You'll see there's two opportunities to access this property, one from South Main and one from um, the Old Register Road. It turns into something over on the other side. But that Old Register Road entrance is extremely awkward. If you've ever visited that facility, I highly doubt you entered from Old Register Road. Everyone enters from South Main, and it creates a bit of an access problem with that site. The biggest issue with this site is its proximity to Georgia Southern and its location along a heavily trafficked foot walkway for Georgia Southern students. Directly across uh, South Main is University property. Caddy corner from the site is University property. Just outside of frame is the Military Sciences building. At certain times of day, if you sit at that light, there's enough foot traffic at that light to be indistinguishable from the center of campus. There are a ton of students who walk right down there in the morning and the afternoon and though this is a very attractive property with a very attractive applicant, I don't know that it's an ideal site for liquor stores. This is 814 South Main. This is the county line application. Very large piece of property. I think it's two acres. Um, but it, if you go and look at it, it really falls off on the back. I'm really not sure how much the back side is usable. I think we're primarily focused on the existing building and the front of the site. Um, I think it has largely the same issues that the Party Impressions building, Mr. Hunt's building, does. Um, it has relatively limited parking, relatively limited opportunities to expand that parking or to expand access. It's very tight to the front of the road, and most importantly, it's on the same side of the street as the university, and it is directly adjoined by university property. It's vacant university property, so it doesn't violate the ordinance in terms of distance from university buildings which is a change that this council made from the state law, but it is directly adjoined by Board of Regents, Board of Trustees property. Finally, this is 815 South Bay. This is the property that's the subject of our application. <laughs> this is a unique piece of property. Um, if you look at this piece of property from the air, you see a lot of building and a lot of pavement. It is paved corner to corner. I don't know that I've seen another piece of property in the city or in the county paved in this way. I'm sure there's an interesting history to explain why it is that way, but here it is what it is. You can see the existing building. You can see the open pad off the back. You can see the expansive area for parking. It is lit along the northwestern corner and fenced along that section. It has dedicated open access off of South Main. It is on the opposite side of the street from the university, and it is 500 yards from the corner where there's so many students traffic on a daily basis. I'll pull it back for one more frame and show you the three sites from the year in relation to one another. I think you can see um, from that image, 815 grants you some very important separation from the university traffic and from the student population. I wanted to show you one more slide of bubbles. This is 1,000 yards on 815 versus 1,000 yards on 801 South Main. So this is uh, my applicants as a, compared to Mr. Hunt's Party Impressions building. I think what this shows you is that this application gives you a little bit of additional control on the section of South Main uh, heading out to the bypass. If uh, you grant this site reservation, you will gain the entire stretch from the bypass to the university property and lock out that section of South Main. Lane, if you'll give me one more slide. I want to overlay that bubble against the LNC site reservation in green at the top, the Bright Ideas um, Whiskey Business uh, site reservation for today in Fuchsia and then the Midtown. If you lay those out together and consider the corridor that you gain, you can really lock out from 80 to the north, 
to the bypass to the south, and that is what your liquor store population will look like through that section of the city of Statesboro. And I think that's a very important aspect of this piece. The buildings are comparable, the applicants are exceptional, exceptional, the sites are distinguishable, and ultimately the site was the most important thing to this council, and I hope that will carry in this decision. I'm pleased to be here once again on behalf of 815 South Main, and hope you will look favorably on their application. The owners are here to answer any uh, questions you may have, and uh, excuse me, I failed to mention one more thing. If you need one more reason to like this application, um, at the last meeting, I heard from some folks who were disappointed at the last meeting. People were not happy that two guys uh, did not get a uh, liquor store application. I want to be very clear, this is an application for 815 South Main. This is not an application for two guys. However, my clients have reached out to the team at two guys, and should they have obtain their site reservation, I think they would look to contract with those folks for design, training, staffing, the kind of operational elements that are important to ensure that this business is successful in the long run. These applicants are very committed to that. Uh, Jeffrey and Shay, the managers from Two Guys, are here to speak in support of the application. They view it as an opportunity uh, for their team to grow in their space as well. And we hope again that you will look favorably on this application. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak for um, 7 a? 8 a. Uh, Jeffrey Johnson, assistant manager of Two Guys. Uh, I was for you all a couple weeks ago. Uh, we're back. Um, I'm a 19-year resident of Statesboro. I've lived in the city. Uh, Councilwoman Mack, yeah. you were the first politician to ever campaign door-to-door -door at my apartment complex, you know. Um, so I'm here. Uh, I've been working at Two Guys now for almost eight years. We've grown a lot since then. Uh, under new leadership of Shea, we've hired college students. Uh, we focus on training, knowing our product, and we hope with A15A to be able to continue that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor? Um, I just wanted to say that um, we're excited to be able to work with A15, and they've reached out to us. We've reached out to them, and um, we have a lot of knowledge and experience, and we are really excited to work with them and to just bring what you love about two guys to 815 without it actually being two guys. Um, we're going to help train and we're going to teach and we're going to learn the ropes and I'm not sure if some staff's going to be moving over there, um, but we're really excited and we hope for this opportunity to go through and you know we'll continue being good stewards and we've all, all of my staff has already been tip certified. We've confiscated I think four or five big IDs already in the past week and we're just we're really diligent about doing right by the community. Thank you for your consideration. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, anyone to speak in favor of seven? Good morning, Mayor and Council. I'm Nick Props. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to add a couple other points that, in my opinion, I see as a benefit to our location at 815 South Main. Uh, one, the size of that building to me is a benefit because we're not trying to be the biggest in town. And we believe that's a good balance for the others that are getting licenses as well. We don't want to impact other businesses if we can avoid it. So we're not a mega store. That's not what we're trying to be. So we think our size is good because it allows the opportunity to be shared by other people. Um, the, uh, the other thing about that location is I look at it as it's basically on the going home side of the road. So why that's important is I believe the traffic flow with our two entrances exits there, uh, it's easy to get in and out. And I think it's gonna reduce the number of turns potentially versus some of the other locations. So that's my opinion of that. Um, we are gonna put a significant investment into the building. I've never thought that building stood out as being one of the nicer looking properties on South Main. And as you enter our city, you know, my goal is always to make sure my properties are first class. Every property I've ever owned, I fix it up, I invest in it. I, I really try my best so that when people look at it, they say, you know, they can be proud of that. And that's how I feel. So this building is, is no different. Um, there's gonna be a significant investment. You know, we're gonna reskin the building. We've got brick uh, in mind, new glass, uh, new entry, awning. Um, so the building is gonna change the character of it. And my goal is really for it to be the, the high end of liquor stores. That's what I want it to look like. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, basically those are the those are the main points. I think our traffic flow is excellent. We already have two um, curb cuts that are in. Our parking is uh, better than any other that I could find. Uh, that's one reason actually we bought the building is because it has so much parking. So it's easy to load, it's easy to get in and out of, and our slight distance away from Georgia Southern I think is a benefit. So uh, I just hope you will, uh, will consider all those factors. I appreciate how much um, time you're putting into making sure that each uh, site is, is you know, well chosen, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else speak in favor of 7 a? I'm Robbie Bell. I appreciate the opportunity to be heard. I really just wanted to be able to put a name with a face. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else in favor of 7A? All right. Anyone in favor of, I mean, excuse me, 8A. Anyone else in favor of 8A? Okay. All right, we'll move down to 8B. Anyone speak in favor of 8B? Good morning again. <laughs> I'm going to grab the remote here and hopefully not trip myself up. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Penny, again, members of the council, my name is Andrew LaVoy. I'm with Bruce Matthews and LaVoy here in Statesboro. I appreciate y'all's time and attention this morning. Um, as I go through this presentation, I want y'all to stop me. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but we've got some folks here that might be able to help me if I can. Also, if I just go too quickly, please tell me to slow down because that happens from time to time as well. All right. There's no name, I think, more closely associated with package sales in this area than the county line. Nobody around here does it. Nobody around here does it better. Some folks don't know. For 39 years, since 1983, they've had to conduct their business over in Candler County, but the county line's been owned and operated by two Bullitt County residents. Pam and Landrum Hodges. The operation of the store and its location out there on the county line dates back even further than 1983. And Mr. Landrum and Ms. Pam have worked at the store for years. Mr. Landrum's still there almost every day, and their daughter's taken up the family business and works there now too. For decades, the Hodges have been blessed by folks from Bullock County and Statesboro coming to their store. And now they want to bless this community by opening up their second location right here in Statesboro, right at the entrance to the Blue Mile in a flagship location that folks coming in from 16 on 301 will see and can be proud of when they come into our town. And I'm proud to represent here today Pam and Landrum Hodges and the County Line 2 LLC. The Hodges are both here this morning and you'll hear from Ms. Pam Hodges when I wrap up my presentation. But that's not all. You'll also hear from the Candler County Sheriff, John Miles. He submitted a letter of recommendation for the Hodges that was filed with their application. Now, I didn't see that with the packet that went out, or the agenda that went out. I wanted to make sure. Have y'all seen the letters of recommendation that were submitted? I, I just, I'm asking, because I don't. if you haven't, I'd like to approach and hand them out. Um, if anyone's unfamiliar with the letters, I've made a few copies. There were three letters submitted on behalf of the Hodges in support of this application. One, like I said, is from Sheriff Miles. The other is from the president of Savannah Distributing Company, Mr. Monsies. And the third is from Mr. Darren Burnett at Sonotas. These are community and business leaders. Y'all don't have to look hard at these letters to see what kind of glowing things they have to say about the Hodges. And Sheriff Miles' letter speaks for itself as to just how reputable a business the Hodges have run for all these years and how they have always operated in compliance with all the county ordinances and state laws. And so y'all don't have to look through and read too quickly. I just want to point out for you a few things that Sheriff Miles says in his letter. I've never had any issues with the county line. Landrum and his staff have always been accessible when needed and made their store a safe place for their customers. The county line operates without complaints or disturbances. I couldn't have said it any better myself, but Sheriff Miles, like I said, feels so strongly about the reputation and credibility of the Hodges that he took time out of his busy schedule this morning to be here and speak with you in person, which he will. Now, considering this application, we have to look at the ordinance. 
What does the package sales ordinance tell us about what should be considered? Well, as the council knows, section 623 references 613. That's where the criteria can be found. And when we turn to section 613, which is from the old alcoholic beverages license ordinance uh, from a few years ago, what criteria helped this council in making its decision? Very first, like I said in my prior presentation, C1, reputation. The reputation, character, trade, and business associations and past business ventures of the applicant, owner, or any other person associated with the business. Again, you'll hear from Sheriff Miles about the sterling reputation that the Hodges have in Candler County. And this is important again. We've been brought into conflict because we're within a certain uh, distance from some other applicants. I'm again not meaning to disparage anybody or say anybody can't run a good business or a tight ship or improve this community. But what I do think is important to point out here is the Hodges are the only applicants under this agenda item. Applicants, not potential tenants, not potential operators. They are here today as the actual and only applicants with an unblemished reputation in this field. Package sales. It's all they do. It's what they know. They know it better than anybody in this area. They've got a proven track record of nearly four decades of running exactly this type of business and doing so honorably and in compliance with the laws and regulations of the state, Candler County. Their reputation in this business stands alone among their competition. And that also weighs into another one of the criteria, manner of conducting prior alcoholic beverage business. And this is where I do think the ordinance says it's not just general reputation or business reputation, it's package sales reputation, it's alcoholic beverage reputation. Because one of the things this council has been told to consider is the manner in which the applicant owner or any other person associated with the business conducted a prior business, especially as to the necessity of unusual police observation, inspection, in order to prevent the violation of any law, regulation, or ordinance relating to that business. There's no question again, you'll see this in the letters of recommendation, you'll hear it from Sheriff Miles, the county line has never had any issue and the Hodges have never had any issue in conducting their prior and their existing package sale business. They're the only applicants to have any prior business in package sales and you can't find anybody who's done it better in our area. Some of the other criteria in 613C we can run through pretty quickly because the answer is none. Previous violations of alcoholic beverage laws, previous revocation of license, Denial or revocation for the location. Of course, there's none here, but the Hodges have also had none out at the county line in Candler County. And prior incidents at the location. None, 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 none. Either here, of course, or out in Candler County. So there are no contingencies here. There's no guessing. Who will be the operator of this store? What kind of folks are we dealing with? It's the Hodges. It's the county line. We know who they are, and we know what kind of business they run. So that brings us to section... 613C4, which is location. The location for which the license is sought as to traffic congestion, general character of the neighborhood, and the effect the establishment would have on the adjacent and surrounding property values. And that brings us to this property, which is 814 South Main Street. Hopefully y'all can see it's got that blue outline there. Uh, the space running from South Main down to Old Register Road. This is 6,000 square feet, 2.24 acres, no need to change this building, no need to expand this building. It is what it is, and it's a good size to serve this kind of need. The Hodges have owned an interest in this property since 1990. Mr. Hodges bought it way back then in hopes that someday package sales would be allowed in the city of Statesboro. So finally, his dream's coming true. And for the Hodges, as park property owners, not only do they want the business to succeed, they want this property to succeed. They want this stretch of 301 to succeed. They're invested in both parts of this, the business and the property. And one thing I agree with Mr. Gohagen about, you want a great site. You want something that'll work for this kind of use. And there's one thing about this site that I think sets it apart from the competitors on this site. With any of these applicants, I think this council would be rightly concerned about trucks slowing down and turning to get into these properties, to make deliveries, to get in and out, and to just navigate the space. You can see here, the Hodges property, unlike the other two, stretches from South Main down to Old Register Road. And what the Hodges have back there on Old Register Road is a paved entrance, and they currently have dirt and gravel driveways 
that lead from the back up through the property to the loading dock, which is highlighted in pink there. So not only is there an option to access this property from 301, but there's an option to access this property from Old Register Road and reduce traffic or potential hazards out on that main thoroughfare by rerouting, by paving first, the intent is to pave these back driveways and offer a second option for either delivery drivers or customers to get up into that property to the parking space, which is going to be developed on the side of the building, or to the loading dock, and thereby not require everything to come into this property from 301. They're also going to try to keep as many of those trees in the back as they can, but if you go out there and you take a look up from Old Register Road, you'll see the driveways. They lead you right through the property right now. It would just take a little time to turn it into something more permanent, and that's a new access point for this property that the other ones simply don't have. It's a unique option. And it's a great site for that reason. They've already got infrastructure in place to get you to the back of the building, which is what you see here. Back of the building's on the right, and what there currently is coming off of Old Register Road is on the left. Of course, right now it's gated. It's not being used for, for anything except what the Hodges want to get in on the back of the property there, but it's ready to go. And that's different from these other applicants, and it makes it a great site for this use. So what about the building itself? Of course, it's been vacant for some time. Y'all can see it here. It's a metal building. Um, but there's no question that there's potential for this building, like the others in this space or this area, to be uh, revitalized and turned into something this city can be proud of. And I've heard from prior meetings that's exactly what this council wants to do. Use this ordinance and this competition to bring new exciting businesses into town that will breathe life into these underused spaces. We're talking the building, the parking areas, the loading dock, and the driveway. And the plans for this space are, are truly breathtaking and, and, and really exciting. And I'll just say this little anecdote. When I first sat down with the Hodges to talk about this project, I asked them, are you still going to call it the county line? I mean, you're not really the county line anymore. You're because of what your city council has wisely decided to do. You can be something else. You can be the city limits. I don't know what you want to call yourself, but <laughs> you, you, can, you can change it up. And they said without hesitation, no. They said, we are the county line. It's how people know us. It's how we want people who live and travel here to see us. We have our reputation. We have our brand. We have our commitment to the county line. We're going to be the county line here in Statesboro, just like we've been in Candler County for all these years. It doesn't matter how close we are to the county line. That's who we are, and that's what we want to do. And this is what they want to do. They want to turn that building into a premier location right on the edge of town with reach to the bypass to do what they've done for all these years. Single purpose, high end, newly redesigned, revitalized package store, both the property and the business owned by a family that knows this business better than anyone. New jobs in the county and city, of course. No concern about subtenants or shared space or other uses just a store that this city can be proud of and benefit from as shown by what the Hodges have brought into Candler County for all these years, building the original county line from the ground up. I feel and I think we are incredibly fortunate that among all the other very well qualified applicants we're hearing from today and other days, that the Hodges are looking to invest in our city and our community with this new store. There can't be any argument that they can do this. Of course they can. They've done it for decades. This type of business is their lifeblood. I ask that this council look favorably on this application, award this site reservation to the Hodges and the County Line 2 LLC so that they can bring their experience, their goodwill, and their business into this community, just like they've done over in Candler County for all this time. Like I said, to give you a little more detail about the family and what they're doing now and what they want to do here in town, I'm going to introduce Ms. Pam Hodges and then Sheriff Miles will speak to you all as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Had a little accident with a, a jar of olives in the grocery store. <laughs> now, all of you know by now my name is Pam Hodges and I'm here to speak on behalf of the county line. And y'all know I like to talk. So <laughs> my daughters who are here with me today said, Mom, you need to focus on the facts and so I wrote my little speech so it's not that it didn't, didn't come from my heart but 
our rodents all stay on track. The County Line has been a successful liquor store for 39 years, and we pride ourselves on having a foundation of honesty, integrity, and never compromising our principles. We're a multi-generational residence of Statesboro, and since the day we opened the County Line in 1983, not only have we brought our money back to Bullock County, but we've also consistently supported Statesboro's local businesses, charities, sports, schools, and Georgia Southern. We're also a member of the Chamber of Commerce. The building for the location we submitted is one that we've owned since 1990, and as Andrew said, it was for the sole purpose of the possibility of states for voting and delivering package sales. With this building being at the entrance of the Blue Nile and our hometown of Statesboro, we understand the importance of how it should look. We want it to be nothing but amazing. We want to have a building and a business that the residents of Statesboro will be proud of, and that they are and that they would be excited at how the rendition of the building is going to turn out and we hope y'all are too please know our desire to open in states for is not a mission of greed at all this is our livelihood we have been a family business for a long time and plan to continue to be the owners and operators of this location we will not be bringing outsiders in to run our business we proudly stand on the multiple letters of recommendation that have been submitted on our behalf. To me, they speak volumes of our reputation and how we've managed our business in Cameron County. And we're more than honored to have the Sheriff of Cameron County, John Miles, here to speak for us on our behalf. I truly appreciate your time and your consideration in allowing us to carry on the tradition of the county line in our hometown of Statesboro. And at this time, I would like to introduce John Miles, Sheriff Miles. Don't get nervous. I know y'all think sheriffs get long-winded, but I'm, <laughs> I'll be fairly brief. And uh, before I get started, I'll say that I just learned this morning who the other applicants were in this space. And boy, you've got a tough decision. They're, they are really impressive business people that you're hearing from today. And the lawyers have done a great job, too. Um, I. Uh, I won't get into the fact that you're pulling tax dollars out of Cameron County. We'll just go ahead and get that element <laughs> identified in the room. <clears throat> but I, I want to introduce myself. I'm John Miles. I'm the sheriff of Cameron County, and I've been in law enforcement in this area uh, for 28 years. I uh, started my career in Statesboro as a police officer and moved up to detective, and part of my responsibility as a detective was alcohol compliance back in those days. Um, as the sheriff, of Cameron County, you know, I have a unique position to know what businesses um, cause problems and what businesses do not cause problems in our community. And I can say that the reputation of the county line and the uh, Hodges family is impeccable in Cameron County. Again, I'm not here to speak uh, against anybody that's applied for this um, permit, uh, but I am, but, but I can say that the Hodges family has operated that business for as long as I can remember. Uh, I was a kid, I guess, when that, or a young, young teenager when that business was started in Cameron County. And uh, you know, we've had just nothing but uh, a good experience with them, no problems. I had our staff at the Sheriff's Office go back and check our CAD directors to see what kind of calls for service we've had at the County Line Liquor Store, and quite frankly, we couldn't find many. Um, one recent call we had was when a vehicle careened off of Highway 46 and ran into a customer's vehicle and the front stoop of the uh, county line store uh, and in that case I can tell you that the family that was there immediately contacted law enforcement saw about their customer who had just stepped away from the vehicle when it was hit at highway speed mm -hmm. and uh, and provided us with video of the incident so they were very uh, you know they saw about their customers they, they were able to help us with the investigation uh, very quickly and uh, we appreciate that too. Um, also, uh, I checked with our chief deputy who's involved in alcohol compliance, sometimes working with the revenue department. And as you guys know, on occasion, you'll have compliance checks. They'll send in people who, um, who are underage in order to try to get store, or I say test stores on their ability to weed out people who are underage buying alcohol. And he informed me just yesterday that there had been some of those uh, conducted in, in the last several years 
and that the county line had passed all those compliance checks when other stores in our county had not. I think that's that should be noted that, that they run a good safe business for their customers. They're in compliance with ordinances and and the uh, state laws and um, you know I hope that you'll take all that into consideration and if you have any questions for me I'm open to answer right now. We're in the council discussion. Thank you. Right, thank you. Right, is there anyone else to speak in favor of AP? Right, seeing that there is none, is there anyone here to speak in favor of AC? Oh, it's on. <laughs> Good morning, Mayor and City Council and City Manager Penny. Uh, my name is Bubba Hunt. On the application that says Timothy A. Hunt, <laughs> most people have no idea who that is, except my wife. And uh, but my, I go by Bubba in Statesboro. And I just want to start off by saying that I've been a small business owner here for 30 years. I've opened some businesses. I have sold businesses. I operated Pond City from two, 1992 to 2018. When I sold out, I had 11 locations, five in Statesboro. Now I'm trying to get Wayne's attention. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was listening to you. <laughs> um, I have uh, I got married in Statesboro. I've raised my children in Statesboro. My daughter's 21 and works at um, what school is she working at? <laughs> Sally Z. Sally Z. My son is 18 and takes him to graduate high school. Um, I think you know that. I have been a doer in this community for a long time. Mm -hmm. I have given a lot back, a lot of my sweat and equity. Um, when I open a business, I tend to go all in. Mm -hmm. And you can see that by Remax, which I started in 2018. My Remax company started with zero, and over the last three and a half years, we've sold over $200 million with real estate. I'm a modern mortgage company. That's a mortgage company over there on Highway 80 right next to Remax. And this year our mortgage company is going to bring about $30 million worth of mortgage business into Bullock County. I'm an all-state insurance company here. A lot of you don't know that. I don't market it too much. But we help most people that are buying homes from us get insurance. Um, <clears throat> just recently I opened Butts and Brews Barbecue on <coughs> South Main Street. And people go, what the hell are you thinking about them? But I know how to run a business. And I love barbecue. And if you ride by that location now, you will see the difference between the previous ownership and my ownership in that location. We are packed. And I'm not scared to tell you, the month of April, we did 55,000 in sales of barbecue. That's good. Um, <clears throat> why I think my location is the best location, it is the best location in Statesboro for, for an alcohol license. And I did not bring any flashy pictures. I'm not represented by an attorney, but I do want to share this with y'all. So you can just see the accesses of the location. I'd have to argue with um, the competition saying their location is the best. This location is the best location. It has right now 20 available parking spots right there at the red light. Access in and out through the red light or through four other accesses of that, of that property. Um, if you look to the left, you'll see where the line starts from Pond City next door. Um, there is also additional parking if needed. The, the green area to the left is where you see cars park right now. That is a part of this property as well. Pond City uses it right now, but it is a part of 801 South Main Street. Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to build a destination right there. It's going to be one beautiful store. I didn't bring pictures of what my intentions are, but you can rest assured that with me attached to it, it's going to be first class. Um, it's 10,000 square feet. There's plenty of room for growth. Um, and I'm just excited about what's going on for, for the city. I've been at every meeting, voicing my opinions and concerns. And we're, we're down to this location and two others. And I'm very respectful of both of them. I mean, Nick and I, Robbie are friends. Mm -hmm. uh, been friends for a long time. 
business is business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you all know that I run a successful business and I do it first class. Um, you have a little thing to say. I do employ 26 people right now who own my companies. Uh, Butts and Booze Barbecue went from four employees to 16 employees. And I hire a lot of part-time Georgia Southern college students and of local community people that are, are helping that business grow. Um, I got 23 real estate agents that work for me at Remax. And I'm a, like I said, I've been actively involved in this community forever. I give back. Um, you will see me anywhere doing anything, mostly barbecue, but I've done <laughs> fundraise for everybody, including, including American Diabetes, the Exchange Club. I, worked, I was with the Exchange Club for probably 15 years, mm -hmm. doing a million dollar shootout every single year. I've been on the, the, the um, board of the uh, Chamber of Commerce. I ran the Small <laughs> Business Committee and put on the, the Gala twice. I ran the golf tournament for the Chamber several years. I have given back, and I'll still continue to give back to this community, just like I always have. Um, I'm just asking for you to consider this location because it is a great location. It's at the red light, you got easy in and out access, and uh, the trucks can come in there and pull towards the back, get out towards the back, and so it is a, it's a great spot. I'm just asking for your consideration and accepting this as, as the location. And it will be a destination for anyone coming in the states or going out of states. I appreciate it. Thank y'all very much. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak for eight six? All right, seeing that there is none, is there anyone here to speak against eight A? Is there anyone here to speak against eight B? Is there anyone here to speak against eight C? Seeing that there is none, uh, is there a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. We'll hear from our city manager before council discussion. Uh, recommendation for, to the mayor and city council for conflict with South Main Street uh, package store uh, locations. Uh, the package store conflict is between 815 South Main LLC. County Line 2, um, also also known as the County Line, and Tempe Allen Hunt, also known as uh, House of Booths. The proposed address of 815 South Main uh, at LSC uh, is 815 South Main Street. The proposed address of County Line is 814 South Main Street. The proposed address for the House of Booths is 801 South Main Street. A conflict does exist between the three locations with the distance being less than a thousand yards required by the ordinance and the city chose to require greater separation than the state which is 500 yards. All three locations are viable for operating a package store and all applicants have met the requirements to, to be awarded a package store license by the city council. Based upon the additional factors of general impact of the location on the surrounding areas, all locations are currently vacant all locations have sufficient parking to accommodate their customers. All locations appear to have sufficient space to accommodate delivery vehicles. However, all would be challenged to have delivery vehicles and customers at the same time. South Main Street has a traffic count of 19,600 vehicles per day. And South Main Street at Record Lane is a signalized intersection. I recommend the liquor license be awarded to 801 South Main Street due to its location at a signalized intersection. However, I do recommend the name of the business be changed from the House of Booths. The business would be located on a major thoroughfare and at an entrance to Georgia Southern University. I recommend the other applicants be allowed to identify another location without the submission of another application fee. Uh, and the applicants would be would have 60 days to submit a new location. That is my recommendation. Okay, thank you. We'll now open it up for council discussion. Um, I wanted to say something. I do want to congratulate everyone and applaud everyone um, for the good job that you did. Your lawyers came up here. Everyone gave a good presentation, even Bubba and 
I'm sorry, I forgot your name. The gentleman who weren't represented. I think that you guys did a great job too, and I, I really appreciate that. that. That's right. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but this is my district, and my concern is the apartment buildings that are in the area. Um, although I believe that they must be in the guidelines because we're here looking at them. But I would just be doing a disservice to my constituents who live in those apartment complex. All of those college kids, we stated when we started out that we didn't want it to be any, near any housing or near the classrooms. To me, I feel that it's just too close. All of them? Yeah. It's a, it's a whole bunch of apartment complex. I'm guessing that they're not universal <coughs> home, but and correct me if I'm wrong, 805 is Robbie's, and I believe Monarchy is right there. Yep. Is that correct? It's right across. It's 8, okay, so, 815. So there's another apartment complex over there. I mm -hmm. can't think of the name. Each, all locations have an apartment complex close to them. They're not university owned, but college kids live there. So to me, I would be doing it the service. I would have to say, that I'm not in recommendation for either. I think that you guys did a great job. I want to see you guys open a business, but just those are my constituents. Those are the people who I represent. So for me, it's just too close. Mm -hmm. All right, any further discussion by council? I have a question, please, <coughs> for the Hodges. Um, I did ride over there, and I didn't see the back access to uh, Old River Road. So maybe I just didn't look closely enough. It's a path. It's, it is a road, and we had to put a gate up in the back because we didn't know, you know, if we were going to be using that access or not. But yes, it goes all the way through. Okay. So it's wooded back there, but there is There's a trees dirt road that goes. We got to take some trees down, but we wanted to dig up as many as we could, just so it wouldn't be a blank parking lot. But um, yeah, we've got. Plenty of space to park, and that way it gave access for the delivery trucks to come in and not be on the main road and where it's like to come in or exit off of the old register. Thank you. Are right, any further discussion by council? Maybe we should ask the question, Mr. Hunt, would you be willing to change the name if your application were granted? Absolutely. I've been originally submitted on my name, and then there's a new category that's the same. We just did that now. Absolutely, I have no problems with that. So I want to echo what Ms. Mack said about the presentation. I appreciate it. Uh, it's not brief, but it's detailed and persuasive, and we have some articulate local people who presented a lot of aspects. Some of them I hadn't thought about clearly. So thank you for the presentations to the attorneys and Mr. Hunt. Um, well, any further discussion with council? I have the same concern as Council Member Mack. It's, all of the locations seem very close to housing, whether it be uh, college-owned housing or just housing in general. We, we moved in favor of, um, just a few moments ago, we voted no because of that very reason. Um, so I'm not in favor of you know any of them at the time, but if I had to choose, um, it would probably be 815 South Main, only because of the partnership that they're doing with, with two guys. I think the partnership for me um, is winner. Um, but uh, I'm really not in favor of any of them due to just the location to the housing um, apartments. Okay. Any further discussion by council? Um, Mayor, um, you know, when we were talking about, uh, about the high school, uh, we just, we just um, a number of members of council up here discussed the walkability issue of students walking by. And uh, if you guys have seen that section, that's probably the second highest student foot traffic count as opposed to Fair Road and Chandler, maybe as people go across that direction. Uh, and it just seems to me that putting a liquor store right in the footpath of, of students is just not, not a good idea. So for that matter, I'm, I'm uh, personally I'm not, would not be in favor of the 801 location just again just the sheer volume of foot traffic walking by that we didn't want them walking by at the high school it doesn't make any sense to not to mention the fact that that is right at the doorstep of the, of the driving uh, access to that university there are three main accesses the bypass fair road and 301 that's one of them and to put a liquor store at the, at the gateway to our, at our university not only does it disservice I think to our city but it also does a disservice to the university which plays such a major role 
uh, in, uh, in in this community's economy. And that being said, I should mention I, I do work for Georgia Southern, but this is not the uh, official stance of Georgia Southern by any stretch of the imagination. So, any further discussion, my counsel? Uh, yes, sir. I have two cents, ten cents. <laughs> uh, I know all of them. Um, everybody that's applying here, um, and it's hard to make a decision like this. I know some, somebody's going to be upset that again with all the way people are talking. I don't know how to vote for the guy. <laughs> um, as I look at it, uh, the county line uh, with its back entrance, I really, really like that. Um, and I like it that they have run the line for so long. And the sheriff says no incidents. Um, that I like it. I like that a lot. Um, if this comes to a vote, uh, I'll vote for the county line. Any further discussion from council? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I was reminded by the other comments, and I do want to applaud the folks who reached out to two guys. I like the idea of a partnership there and bringing in that experience, but I'm kind of agreeing with my other council members that maybe we don't love any of these locations particularly since mr penny has recommended and we've agreed with the idea that you can look again a little harder and find another place and come back within 60 days um so that's the way i'm leaning is so that we don't need to approve any of these three okay right, any further any further discussion by council i just want to remind council of our thought process when we did the ordinance how we were in favor that we didn't want it to be near the college students, the high school students or any students. Although these apartment complexes are not university owned, they are all uh, college kids. All college kids reside there. And it is heavily trafficked by college kids. So I just want us to just keep in mind our thought process when we put this ordinance into place. All right, any further discussion by council? Uh, you know, the way that does echo that, um, 19,000 cars a day, a lot. And I drive down this road every day. I drive down it when I leave here. Uh, just on traffic alone, this is not ideal, I think. Um, except for the old register road rear entrance. Uh, anyway, they're all good locations. They're all good applicants. Um, but I'll go along with y'all if y'all want to deny all of them and ask them to come back and find more. But if y'all want to vote on them, I have, I have one of them. I know who I'm voting for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. just, only that back path, just remember that back path comes right out of the Georgia Southern campus. Oh, I know where it comes out. Mm -hmm. I know right where it is. Any further discussion? Well, I have, I just, you know, never mind, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right. So after, after hearing, um, after hearing from council, um, is, is there a recommendation outside of the city manager's recommendation that we need to make a motion for? I, I guess I would make a motion to recommend all applicants have the 60 days to find a different location. Okay. So we need to deny, <coughs> to deny. Okay. Move to deny. Um, with the 60 day um, oh. with the 60 day to find something else. Okay. Sorry guys. I, is there I'm a, sorry. Is there a second? Is I there second a, it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All, any opposed? Nay. All right. Let's show that agenda item uh, 8A, 8B, 8C has been denied uh, with the 60 day uh, window for resubmission uh, uh, via a four to one vote. Uh, we'll go down to agenda item nine, a consideration of a motion to approve a second amendment to the lease agreement with T-Mobile for city water tower access on Hill Street. Mayor, member of the council, uh, this is simply, uh, they have to upgrade some equipment and so therefore they are asking us to amend the lease. Uh, there's no increase in the uh, fees or anything that we recommend for any discussion by council? Seeing that there's none, there's a motion to approve. So moved. Is that a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Can we move we'll, we'll move down to agenda item 10. Consideration of a motion to approve the 50 year ground lease agreement with Brian Salani, State Statesboro LP, for the former Judy D. Bryant Elementary School for a senior housing facility development. Mr. Penny, can you? Mayor, members of the council, if you, if you remember, I think at the last meeting, you entered into an agreement with the uh, Board of Education to transfer the old Judy D. Bryant, the front part of the old Judy D. Bryant School to of the city and so and the purpose of doing that was so that we could then um, make that land available with a long-term lease to a proposed developer and so we are recommending that um, we work with um, uh, Bryant Landing Statesboro LP uh, in order so that they can su submit an application to DCA for some senior housing uh, and they would have an option to, to enter into a 50-year lease, okay. um, provided that they are awarded the grant for the project. And if you remember, they missed the project, they missed the award by half a point the last time. So we would recommend, we would recommend approval of this um, uh, agreement with, with them. Okay. We're opening up, uh, Council, any discussion? Yes, Mr. Uh, Penny, at the, you, you said they, uh, the, the, the developer has an option um, do we also have some options for future approvals since we only have a sketch of the plan? We don't have any actual construction plans, you know what I'm saying? It's just a concept. So do we, in, in the future, do they, are they going to come to us with a, a, a more defined plan and say this is what we're going to do? Because they come to us with a concept, but they, there's nothing in writing, there's no, there's no locking them into their current. Yeah, and I'm going to, and I, they, I think the zoning, um, they don't have. To, they would have to come through the, the zoning, I believe, with the, with the plans that would be reviewed. However, I I I, I know for sure uh, that uh, um, the developer has no issue with presenting the concepts to the city council, and we can put that on 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 a, a future work plan. Um, uh, Mr. Gross has come before. And shared with you what his plan will be, and I'm sure he'd be more than willing to do that again. Yeah, I, I just want to make oh, yeah. sure that we're, yeah, we, you know, uh, that we're not agreeing to something when we don't really yeah. know what the final product is. I mean, we kind of know, but you yeah. know, we, we can reschedule and come back and present. Okay, that's yeah. fine. I just wanted to make sure there was an option for the city as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion by council? All right. Seeing that there is none. Is there a motion to approve? Yeah. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Moving on to agenda item 11, consider a motion to award a contract for grant administration services for the employment incentive program grant at Southern Gateway Industrial Park to Alan Smith Consulting, subject to award of grant funding. Our funding will be provided by water sewer enterprise funds and grant funds. Mayor, members of the council, this is an employment uh, incentive program uh, that is designed, all of this is related to Aspen Air Jail. Uh, we, have, we have an opportunity to apply for some money uh, to assist with the extension of the infrastructure uh, and we had to follow the, the uh, procurement procedures from uh, the state and the feds in order to be able to receive so that we can apply for the funds. So in this case, uh, it's the grant administration piece, uh, and we recommend Alan Smith Consulting for, for that award. Thank you, Mr. Penny. Any, any discussion by council? Did we put that out for bid? We did. Okay. Saying that there is no, no further, is there a motion to approve? So move. All those in favor? Second. 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 Aye. Right. Right. <laughs> okay, let's start over. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Good. All right. I'll move down to agenda item 12, consideration of a motion to award a contract for professional engineering services for the employment incentive program grant at um, Southern Gateway Industrial Park to Hussey Gay Bell, our subject to award a grant. Funding will be provided by Water Sword Enterprise Funds and Grant Funds. 
uh, again, mayor and council, we had to go through a procurement process again, and uh, Hussey Gay Bill um, submitted a proposal, and we recommended the board uh, to Hussey Gay Bill uh, for the engineering, and all, again, this is all related to Aspen Air Jail mm -hmm. and, and the grant application. Any discussion by council? Subject to grant, the grant hasn't actually been awarded, but we feel pretty confident it will be. Yeah, we feel pretty confident it will be. But however, they are so strict on if we had gotten out of line in the procurement process, that could have negated the grant process, and so we're following their guideline. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. huh? What is that? A motion to approve. To second. Yes, Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll move down to agenda item 13, other business from city council. Is there any other business? Okay. Uh, we'll move down to agenda item 14, city manager comments. Any comments from city manager? Mayor, members of the council, I just want to remind you, um, we're at that time of the year where we will, we're preparing the budget for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have a budget review uh, set for next Tuesday, uh, May 10th at 3 o'clock p.m., 3 to 6 p.m. in this council chambers mm -hmm. uh, to go over the 2023 um, budget. We also have a date for May 24th at the same time, if need, if need be, to have additional review uh, in order to get the, uh, uh, to, to have uh, the budget before uh, on, on this council for public hearing in June. Mm -hmm. I just want to remind you uh, of that. I uh, also want to remind you that um, we presented at the last work session uh, the, the plan and for extension of infrastructure and so in your FYI packet, uh, we have included um, uh, information on um, public meetings with the Fox Lake subdivision. That meeting will be May 9th at 6 o'clock p.m. In, in, in the council chamber. Uh, and I also just wanted to mention to you uh, and follow up on uh, this chamber's concern, and Mayor, you mentioned the concern as well, uh, that the Mulberry Street property we have under code enforcement and and I would simply say to you that we are stressing to our code enforcement officers that they've done a great job. Mm -hmm. We want to be a little bit more aggressive mm -hmm. <laughs> with, with these properties and property owners. Um, we need to uh, clean up quite a bit of stuff in Statesboro mm -hmm. and so this is a good step. And so thank you for calling that to our attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that it? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Um, do we have any public comments at this time? All right. Seeing that there is none, um, we do have need for an executive session. Um, real estate legal, real estate legal um, personnel. Yeah. Uh, for it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there consideration for a motion to enter into executive session to discuss personnel, real estate, and or potential litigation in accordance with OCGA 50-14-13B? Um, post five minute break? Yes. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.